Good morning and welcome to Tuesday the 4th of January 2022 to join with me Reverend Andrew for the Office of Morning Prayer. Our readings this morning are part of Psalm 89 and an extract from Paul's letter to the Colossians from chapter 3. As always both readings will appear as screen share through the course of this recording. So let's turn our thoughts now to morning prayer. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Blessed are you, Sovereign God, King of the nations, to you be praise and glory for ever. From the rising of the sun to its setting, your name is proclaimed in all the world. <clears throat> As the sun of righteousness dawns in our hearts, anoint our lips with the seal of your Spirit, that we may witness to your gospel and sing your praise in all the earth. Blessed be God. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, blessed be God for ever. Our psalm this morning is part of Psalm 89. 89. As it is rather a long psalm, um, some 37 verses, or more actually, um, I've selected uh, just parts um, to try and summarise that part of the psalm. Uh, and as you'll see, it's all based around the anointing of King David. The response. Truly the Lord is our shield. Truly the Lord is our shield. My song shall be always of the loving kindness of the Lord. With my mouth will I proclaim your faithfulness throughout all generations. I will declare that your love is established for ever. You have set your faithfulness as firm as the heavens. For you said, I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn an oath to David my servant. Truly the Lord is our shield. I have found David my servant. <clears throat> With my holy oil have I anointed him. My hand shall hold him fast, and my arm shall strengthen him. No enemy shall deceive him, nor any wicked person afflict him. I will strike down his foes before his face, and beat down those that hate him. My truth also, my steadfast love shall be with him and in my name shall his head be exalted. I will set his dominion upon the sea, and his right hand upon the rivers. He shall call to me, You are my Father, my God and the rock of my salvation, and I will make him my firstborn, the most high above the kings of the earth. The love I have pledged to him I will, will I keep for ever, and my covenant will stand fast with him. His seed also will I make to endure for ever, and his throne as the days of heaven. Truly the Lord is our shield. But I will not take from him my steadfast love, nor suffer my truth to fail. My covenants will I not break, nor alter what has gone out of my lips. Once for all have I sworn by my holiness, that I will not prove false to David. His seed shall endure for ever, and his throne as the sun before me. It shall stand fast for ever as the moon, the enduring witness in the heavens. Truly the Lord is our shield. Let us pray. As we sing of your love, O Lord, anoint us with the Spirit's seal, that we may praise your faithfulness and proclaim your truth from age to age. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, as now, and shall be for ever. Amen. And so to the reading, Paul's letter to the Colossians, chapter 3, verses 1 to 11. So Paul writes, If you have been raised with Christ, Seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on the earth, for you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. Put to death, therefore, whatever in you is earthly, fornication, impurity, passion, evil desire, and greed, which is idolatry. 
on account of these the wrath of God is coming on those who are disobedient. These are the ways you once also followed when you were living that life. But now you must get rid of all such things, anger, wrath, malice, slander and abusive language from your mouth. Do not lie to one another, seeing that you have stripped off the old self with its practices and have clothed yourselves with the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge according to the image of its creator. In that renewal there is no longer Greek and Jew, circumcised and uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave and free. But Christ is all and in all. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, we are in this season of Christmas on into Epiphany. Um, I'm actually recording this service before Epiphany happens. Um, so my mind is sort of thrown forward into uh, the season of Epiphany. The time when we think of the, uh, the wise men who came to the stable uh, to present their gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. And the whole business of giving gifts usually is a two-way thing. Um, we give a gift usually in response to a gift being given to us. And of course that's exactly what's going on in the, uh, the story of the wise men. They have realised and recognised how God has given the gift of himself in the baby Jesus. And the least they can do is to find three extremely precious objects and give them in return, in token of God's rich gift that he has given not just to them but to, to all mankind. And in a way that's picked up in that reading from Colossians chapter 3. Paul is uh, reminding the Colossians there of a whole new way of life that they have taken on board and that this way of life is characterised by uh, the whole business of Christ's um, life and death and resurrection. Once again the biggest gift that God has given us uh, to overcome death and all its works and to overcome all the effects and power and hold and grip of sin in all its shapes and forms and sizes and so on. They, it's a recognition that God has given us this gift and we are encouraged to follow the same so that our whole outlook in life doesn't focus all the time on the negative and we see examples of the values of, of negativity uh, there in that reading. It's repeated twice if not three times there but rather to focus our minds on the greatest gift that God has given us, life itself, life that overcomes all negativity, the greatest negativity of all that being of death itself, in all its shapes and forms and sizes, as I've already said. So as we go forward into the day and into this week, maybe focus our minds on the greatest gift that God has given us and share that through the quality of our lives that we share with others around us. Thanks be to God. We move on now to the words of the Benedictus. We pray together. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors, and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. And so we turn our thoughts now to a time of prayer. Let us pray. First of all, we give thanks to God for this day, and let us pray for those who have authority over us, who have responsibilities that affect the course of our daily lives and we can think as wide as possible 
in our mind's eye for about that and hold this before God in this prayer. Almighty God, we thank you for those whom you have put into positions of authority and power. And we pray, dear Lord, earnestly that they will use their positions justly, rightly, with honesty and sincerity and following as close as possible, always taking the lead and example from you as shown to us through your son, Jesus Christ, in the way that he lived life to your values on this earth. Lord, bless those who will take decisions that affect the course of our lives today, whether that be in health matters, whether that be in well-being issues, or even our own welfare, whether that's in our place in the community or within society or wherever. Lord, bless them and enrich them with your ways in the decisions they take. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And linked to that, we continue to pray for those who are working for us, for our health and well-being through the current COVID situation and the continuing pandemic. Almighty God, we pray your blessing on all the doctors and nurses and all the medical scientists who are researching and are discussing and deliberating results and models uh, to do with the pandemic. Father, we pray most particularly for those who are caring for us, caring for those who have become ill and uh, very sick uh, with the COVID um, itself. Pray, Lord, you'll give them the energies they need and to keep them safe and to keep them free from the virus itself. As we thank you, Lord, for their extreme commitment and uh, devotion uh, to their duty to their vocation uh, in caring for us. Bless them, Lord, this and every day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And let us pray for ourselves, praying perhaps or reflecting further from uh, the reading we've heard today and this season of the year coming into Epiphany. Father God, we thank you for the Epiphany story within the Christmas sequence of the stories. We pray, Father, that we may be ready to always explore the rich gift of life that you have given us, with all its positive values. Lord, may that guide us in our uh, interrelating today with whoever that is, people around us that uh, we're looking forward to being with, or situations and circumstances and meetings that we may find difficult to have to face. Lord, may our thoughts and our reflections Always look to the positive values that you've given us in your Son, Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. So we turn to the collect for today and do a screen share for us on that. We pray, creator of the heavens, who led the Magi by a star to worship the Christ child, guide and strengthen us that we may find our journey's end in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we continue with the words of the Lord's Prayer. We pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And so we come to the, uh, the concluding words. Uh, we draw our, our little service to its close. May Christ, who sends us to the nations, give us the power of his Spirit. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Once again, I pray that you'll have a good day and a good week, and I look forward to being with you next time. Every blessing. Goodbye.